zero economic activity, over 30% unemployment, bills are due in a couple days, same as rent. Virus, well, seems like the US has been hit the hardest. Fed, yeah, that's right, the Fed just took over the treasury, let alone the trillions it's printing every day. Checks, those $1,200 checks that we've all been promised, we, now they could be delayed as long as four weeks. Oil prices keep plummeting. I could go on and on, and in fact, I will. If you're interested, just please stay tuned to hear the rest. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. So today, we're gonna be discussing, well, is the US gonna be able to survive this or not? Because, you know, basically, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of things going on, a lot that we understand, some that we don't understand, but if we're all gonna be real truthful with each other here, no, no one really understands what's going on. Even though we might understand bits and pieces of the puzzle here and there, you know, for all we know, maybe the whole earth is getting ready for uh, alien invasion and they're not really telling us anything about it. So it could be a multitude of things going on. But what we're gonna be talking about right now is about what we do know what's going on, right? The things that we do know that are going on and how they're gonna be affecting the US and how they're gonna be affecting other countries going forward, but mainly the US because that's, you know what you guys are tuning in for here and uh, basically as you guys already know the US is basically the dollar it's uh, the not just the US as a country and uh, the impact that they have you know on the world stage but also the dollar and so um, as the world turns um, everything that goes on by with you know in the US also affects the rest of the world one way or the other, it's just the truth, it's just uh, how it goes. So that's why you know these topics are very important to a lot of people around the world because they really do matter. Um, as of right now, the whole world is basically right now on shutdown. And so because everything is on shutdown right now, um, every single country is, is being affected by this very differently. And um, one of the main reasons why I'm making this episode today and talking about this particular subject um, is basically because um, not just of uh, the obvious events and things that are going on in the world right now, but but, you know, I, I'm right now in Mexico, all right? Um, I stayed on this side of the border. I wanted to ride out this whole thing out here in Mexico. And because of that, um, there's been a lot of people that are constantly, uh, you know, messaging me and asking me why, you know, how things are going on over here. Um, they're, they're, you know, just in constant fear and, and, and constantly uh, spinning out all this propaganda about how terrible and dire the situation is out here. And I'm not going to waste too much time on that at the moment because if you want to know more about what's going on out here in Mexico, I suggest you check out my other channel. Link is at the bottom description of this video um, and, and you know, the other videos um, so that you guys can have a little bit more in-depth, uh, you know, uh, knowledge and uh, you can see with your own eyes, you know, how things are going on out here and what things are, you know, how things are traversing out here in Mexico. Um, but as it comes to like uh, just infections and, uh, and all that deal out here, Mexico, just like India, is doing extremely well okay with um the whole um taking care of this uh cr you know virus situation right oh i almost said a bad word there um so but we're going to be talking about that a little later in the episode okay as to why a country like mexico india and a few others out there are doing exceptionally well and other countries like the united states of america right now is uh, failing miserably at handling this whole uh, virus situation because that's basically what's happening you know we're all seeing it with our own eyes we're seeing it you know, most Americans right now are definitely experiencing it. You know, whether it's uh, a situation that you might have had uh, with a medical facility or a situation, you know, in which um, it's affecting you through the economy. But one way or the other, um, you guys have seen the total failure of the U.S. handling the situation. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably respectful, respectfully disagree with me and say that the United States has handled it very well. Um, but again, you know, we are not going to talk about that for, for right now. We're just going to be talking about that situation as basically just the fact, you know, how it hit everybody, every other country equally. Okay. Everyone has been affected with by this in one shape, form, you know, one sh form or another. And um, even though that right now the U.S. is leading the world and that and infections and possibly deaths and all this stuff i don't know because i really don't follow this that closely all right i do so for the purposes of making some of these videos for you guys but again this is why i chose to write it out here in mexico so that i'm not um constantly bombarded and constantly being uh um held uh, hostage you know 
due to a certain situation that's happening uh, with all this propaganda, you know, all across the world right now. Out here, I could be a little more free. But I digress. Let's talk about the USA. Keep talking. Keep on subject here. You know, but you know, today, as I'm filming this, it's around three o'clock in the afternoon. Markets are already closed, and um, as of right now, basically, um, we saw that the United States, uh, you know, the Dow, the stock market, has. Uh, you know, had a major pump today. They were all in the green. So, and we, last week, um, for a good majority of the week, we were also in green and seems to be recovering or back on track. Now, the reality is, the question that most people are asking themselves right now is like, well, how can this be? Because even people that just don't understand anything at all, don't understand, you know, why the markets are not bleeding red. Right now, the markets, you know, were expected this Monday, you know, to be bleeding red and just really taking a dive. And um, a lot of Americans were also expecting that, but instead we didn't see any of that. Again, let me reiterate what I said early in the video before I even got started. There is zero economic activity right now. Sure, I know, again, there's a lot of people out there that are gonna say, oh, there's deliveries and there's this and there's that. But again, in comparison to the, the rest of the economy, it's basically zero. Let's just say that the economy is functioning at 5%, okay? Nothing can function at 5%, all right? Nothing can really function, okay? So basically zero economic activity in the U.S. right now. As of, um, of you know, last week when we got the, the unemployment numbers, we were, our, you know, basically we're gonna be expecting around 30% unemployment. Probably a lot higher than that because we still have a lot more people that have um, yet to report their job loss or are about to lose their job. And again, this is only going to start getting worse. So we're only about a month into this whole thing. Remember, it's, it didn't really start until the thing started really getting locked down. Um, and so we're only about a month. Let's just give it a, 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 a strong estimate because you're probably watching this in April. Who knows? Maybe a few uh, April 1st. Who knows? They, they definitely no April Fools this year, huh? You know what? I'm sure that a lot of people are waiting for April 1st and you know waiting for for the world leaders to be like April Fools. Maybe that's what is going on out here. I doubt it, but wishful thinking anyway. So zero economic activity, over 30% unemployment. It's only going to get worse. Um, again, speaking of April 1st, um, bills are due, rent is due. All right, so. Even if you're lucky, enough, you're lucky enough to not have to pay rent for whatever reason this month, you still gotta pay your bills, all right? And sure, you know, I, I know that Netflix was uh, giving free, you know, Netflix and there's a few companies out there giving free services, but um, I don't think the electric bill, the electric uh, company is gonna be, you know, being subs, you know, they're not gonna be giving you any free power or anything like that. Same thing as the water bill, same thing as the trash, same thing as your car, same thing as your insurance. And I'm talking about car insurance as well, not just uh, your uh, health insurance, which you also do, and so on and so forth, okay? And um, even though some of these things we will have some sort of a stopgap for, you know, meaning that, you know, our own government has said, hey, we're, gonna, we're promising uh, giving you guys a bunch of money. You know, we're going to give you guys $1,200 rent, $1,200 in, uh, in money. But we all know that $1,200 in the United States of America is probably most likely not enough, all right? It's just not, you know, $1,200 basically just covers a few bills, maybe rent, all right? Depending on where you live and where you are. Um, so that's happening. And then on top of that, the fact that, you know, we keep hearing that, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that unless you filed taxes, you're probably not gonna get your check for four months, all right? Because, you know, again, it's, uh, it's not like, uh, the United States government is an efficient machine that can uh, efficiently knock this out. No, you know, we gotta wait a whole four months, you know, for people to get their money because, again, government. So that's happening. All right, so as uh, more and more of these things, you know, start uh, snowballing, it's only gonna get worse because if we're at pretty much 30, 35% unemployment right now, how are things gonna be in two months? If uh, bills and rent is due now and most people don't even have enough to pay for it because nobody has any savings, because most people had about 500 bucks or less in savings to begin with, um, how's next month gonna, have, gonna go? And then the next month, you know? What about um, the virus situation? From every, say, every single outlet that you hear, it's only gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse. Um, 
What about um, you know the fact that you know we're we're you know a lot of them, a lot of the majority of the United States. First of all, some of them are going to get their checks immediately, and it's not going to be enough. And then the other half are not going to get any checks at all. And um, the economy is still going to be frozen in a standstill. Um, we heard today that um, it now um, the whole economy is going to be frozen, or basically, um, what is it? You guys are going to be on lockdown until April 30th. So that's 30, what, 32 days from now? 33, 34 days from now? No, today is, anyways over 30 days from now. Good luck with that, all right? And so, you know, one thing after another. Now, on top of that, you know, um, the United States economy, as you guys already know, is taking a major hit when it comes to a lot of these uh, situations at the moment. You know, basically, um, Saudi Arabia announced, again, recently, I don't know when, I don't know if it was today, yesterday, or what have you. Because, by the way, I kind of turned everything off on the weekends and I'm kind of just like disconnect and then I reconnect for you guys here so we can, you know, keep uh, trying to make some progress here. But I really just kind of want to disconnect like a lot of you guys, but I can't and I won't because, again, you know, that's Monday motivation stuff, which, by the way, I'm still on the fence as to whether I'm going to keep doing those Monday motivations or not. I might do them again next week, whatever. We'll figure it out. Stay tuned to find out, all right? Um, but anyways, as I was saying, though, um, you know, the oil price situation, you know, uh, again, Saudi Arabia, as of, uh, again, either just a couple hours or days ago, you know, they have also now said that they're going to produce even more oil in order to, again, bring the price down even further. And a lot of countries like Mexico are taking full advantage of that because right now, you know, a lot of countries around the world are taking a major hit and everything is around 30% more expensive in a good majority of uh, countries around the world because of the whole situation that's happening with the United States economy. But a country like Mexico is not really taking too much of a hard hit because they have their own oil. They have, you know, a way to curve this um, economic, uh, you know, disaster. And um, as of right now, being out here in Mexico, there's no, no price increase, no real panic, no real anything. Everything's been handled really good here. We have nothing, you know what I mean, when it comes to like infections and uh, an outbreak and all that stuff. And um, again, as I can uh, sit here and uh, talk to you guys about the fact that the economy out here is doing great, um, which is not the same thing that's happening in the United States. Sure, there's a lot of people out here that are pretty worried about, you know, economic inactivity, you know, coming up. But uh, in the United States, it's it's way more dire than that, okay? The economic inactivity is even worse. Even though you guys are still gonna, are getting a bailout, a mini bailout at that, but still getting a bailout, yeah, most people in the United States are freaking out. Um, the deeper they think about the fact that they might not be working for a, longer, for a longer period of time than just a month or two. Because even if, you know, I mean, when and if the economy finally opens up again in the United States, you gotta remember that, you know, a lot of these companies out there, a lot of these restaurants, a lot of these uh, jobs, whatever they might have been, you know, and whatever industry they might be, they're might, they're probably not going to be around when they when the United States opens up for business again. So if they're not going to be around, then th those are less jobs that people are going to have. So many small businesses are going to suffer if if you know, and they're going to you know be pretty much eliminated and destroyed. Um, with this whole situation at the moment. So basically, you know, the, the new jobs that are gonna be available are gonna be even more um, working for McDonald's, working for Uber, working for these uh, big corporations, and um, assuming that there's any jobs at all. Because again, you know, we keep hearing over and over again that um, they wanna make sure that the social distancing and a lot of these uh, new protocols that are now being set because of the virus are now gonna be um, here forever, you know, meaning that even after the virus, they've said it, even after the virus situation, even after we get over the situation, we want to make sure that we keep a lot of these uh, things in place and moving forward. So, I mean, what does that mean? It means that even when a Walmart, you know, moving forward, move, opens up our grocery store, you're going to see a lot more, um, less humans and more robots and more self-checkout and more, you know, things like that, where you are going to be doing the job, not an employee. There's going to be less employees that go around. And, and this is all part of that movement to automation, the whole thing that Yang was talking about, and it's moving to automation. And at the same time, you know, we need to compensate for people, like, AKA the UBI, which is the, you know, the check that you're all getting or we're gonna be getting now. And so 
you, again, you know, when you're talking to that, that's why when you're looking at the U.S. or other countries like Europe and, and stuff like that, it's not looking too good. But when you're looking at a country like Mexico or India or what have you, they're not having that. They're not going to have that problem at all. It's a completely different problem. First of all, they're used to hardship, so they're just sitting back, kind of like in vacation mode, waiting for this thing to be over and once it's over they're going back to business as usual and they're going to be now in front of the pack you know what i mean it's like basically everybody is in a race and uh everybody had to come to a stop and um everybody got repositioned and now all of a sudden you know depending on what country you are depending on what position you are and, and so i think that country like mexico and india and other countries out there are going to be positioned way in front of the pack as opposed to like other countries like the United States and a lot of countries in Europe are going to be way behind the pack and this is just yeah, I mean we know we can see it or, and feel it already and for those of you that don't know about it well that's why I'm making these videos so you guys can maybe expand a little bit on uh, your thinking as to where all of this is end up is going so back to you know the beginning of this video where I was uh, trying to answer the question is the US going to survive this well Short answer, yes. The United States of America, America, is not going anywhere, all right? It's, it's just like many empires in the past, they're still around. You know, England is still around, Spain is still around, uh, Mongolia is around, China is around, all these countries that have been empires and world empires, you know, Italy, Rome, whatever, you know, so on and so forth, they're still around. The United States is still going to be around. The U.S. is still going to be around no, no matter what. What, now, the question is, is the U.S. going to recover to the point where they're going to be number one again or not? And my thought, my thinking is that no. I don't think that the U.S. is going to reign supreme forever. And um, I don't think that the people that are behind the U.S., okay, you know, these banks or what have you, they're not going to reign supreme forever either. In fact, now let's move on to other things that are happening, you know, that are going to, you know, just reinforce what I was just saying right now. Um, basically... As of a couple days ago, the Federal Reserve is now, oh, too much brightness there. Anyways, uh, the Federal Reserve just took over the Treasury. And I know a lot of people out there are going to discuss this, okay? And they're going to tell me that I'm wrong, that now our president has taken over the Fed, but that could not be any more wrong. And I'm going to explain it to you as soon as I... Beep this because as a matter of fact, I gotta change the battery. Sorry, I'm gonna explain it to you in a second. One second. <laughs> Sorry, guys, just changing this guy, this battery right here, as you guys can see. All right, so all right, let's get back to the next topic I was about to start discussing. So, you know, the fact that, um, you know, right now, uh, the United States has now signed over the Treasury Department to the Fed because, uh, you guys, I'm sure you guys already know what I'm talking about. If not, just do a little research. Uh, but long story short, Trump signed uh, a new thing the other day, all right? And basically, now the Fed and the Treasury are one, okay? So the Fed and the Treasury, so the Federal Reserve, that private entity, okay? Now, remember, the Federal Reserve, for anyone that does not know, is a private company. It is not a government entity a lot of people think that the federal reserve is a government entity and it, it is not the federal reserve i'm sure you guys a lot of you guys already know the federal reserve is a private company but anyways this private company has now merged okay for lack of a better description with the united states treasury the united states treasury is a government entity all right so now this private entity that is the fed has merged with okay the united states treasury what does that mean well again for the longest time the federal reserve the private entity the private company how it does business with the united states is that it prints money and then it lends that printed money to the treasury and to the united states of america all right for lack of a better that's basically what it does all right the federal reserve the private company prints money and then they loan it to the United States with interest, all right? And then the United States has to pay that money back, all right? How it's supposed to work, or how, you know, how all this stuff is really supposed to work is that a country is supposed to have a bank, you know, meaning the, the Bank of the United States of America, and that bank prints money, okay? And gives it to the people, interest-free. But we don't live in that world. We live in a world in which a private entity, the Federal Reserve, prints money 
and then they lend it to the United States and to the people, all right? And then we have to pay that back with interest, okay? On top of taxes and on top of everything else that we have to pay, all right? So that's how it works. So now this, so this private entity, all right, that has all the power in the world to buy every politician, every lobbyist, to buy the influence of everyone and everything out there, have has now, okay, cut a deal, all right, in order to have them, have the president, have, you know, the people in power in this moment in time, which is President Trump, had him sign away, okay, the Treasury. So now the Federal Reserve and the Treasury are one. And there's a lot of people out there, all right, that are Trump supporters that have now said that they, that have now said in one form or another that the United States president, Mr. Trump, has taken over the Fed. But that's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. Okay? It just isn't. Because the Fed, the Fed is a private entity that has bought already the United States. The United States is owned by the Fed. Okay? That's basically how it works. Who owns the Fed? Those Rothschilds and all these other bankers out there, okay, whether it's JP Morgan, Chase, whatever, a lot of these banks, the central banks, okay? All of the central banks in the world, okay? The, the major, the, the, you know, people, the big dogs that they shall remain nameless, all right? Um, but basically, they're the ones that own the Fed and then in turn own the United States of America, all right? So there's no way in hell, all right, that a president, which is already sold himself to these bankers, all right, has any ability in which to take over this Fed private company, all right? The money in, is controlled by an outside entity, all right, which is these bankers. And now, a lot of people are under the impression that Mr. Trump has taken over the Fed, but that's not what happened, okay? The Fed and the Treasury merged. So therefore, if we all know that the Fed has, is the one in power, for, for those of you that don't know, the Fed is the one in power, the banks are in power. For those of you that do know, you guys already know that the banks and the Fed is in power. So if they merge with the Treasury and merge with the United States of America, then what does that mean? That means that it has been a hostile takeover. It has been a coup. It has been successfully you know, taken about you know, right in front of our eyes. That's it, okay? The end. And I would love to dis, you know, have to, to discuss this and talk about this more. And um, by the way, in coming days, I'm gonna be talking to many individuals out there um, that do know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to these things. And we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna you know, do um, interview type situation, uh, video type things, and I'm gonna be uploading them here. We're gonna have uh, real experts on here um, and so on and so forth, you know, that might know a little more, or again, even if they just uh, have different opinions in mind so that we can have a real conversation about this subject and many subjects going forward, because this is way more complicated than uh, any one of us individually understand. So we all have to work together in order to, you know, put the pieces of this puzzle together. Okay, so right now I know it's wishful thinking. I mean, it would be awesome and great if our president, okay, were to have uh, had the, you know, has for, first of all, for, it would be great for him to have the ability to just, you know, destroy the Fed and take over the Fed and be in charge of the Fed and all that shit. But that's not really what happened. It's just not. It's just not. All right. And uh, right now, you know, again, there's no proof that the United States is now in charge of the Fed. In fact, there's plenty of proof that the Fed is now in charge of the U.S. Okay. So now these banks are, in, are even more charged of what's going on in the U.S., all right? And we're going to see this as days go on. At the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and, and uh, have heated debates, okay? Whether Trump is, uh, you know, our savior or God or whether he's the worst president in the world or anything like that. I don't, I'm just here talking to you guys about the facts, my opinions on this, this whole situation. And it's up to you guys out there to make up your own opinions with all the information you guys gather, not just from uh, not just from my channel but from other channels okay because there's a lot of information out there and we have to all you know make our own educated uh, this you know um, we all have to you know uh, make our own educated conclusions you know on all this right now okay not you know just hear something and stick to that that's not gonna help anyone all right at all except 
the agenda of one way or the other. Because if you understand already the dynamic that they want us to fight within with each other and fight, right? So that way we're not fighting against them, then you can't buy into that, okay? We all have to be together, especially the harder this gets, all right? Again, that's why a country like here, like Mexico, we stick together while in other countries like the U.S., most likely is going to be a lot of uh, civil unrest, okay? Because things were already pretty, pretty bad when it came to disagreeing with your fellow neighbor. So this is only going to make it worse, all right? So again, to answer the question, you know, back and forth, you know, is the U.S. going to survive this? I don't know. I mean, I think that as a country, it, it will most likely survive it. Now, how is it going to look after it survives it? How, are, how is everything going to look? The people, the environment, the country? I don't, we don't know that. That we don't know. All right. And um, how long is this going to take? Who knows? I mean, it, it's only, it can only last for so long. You know, this money printing can only, you know, go on for so long. These trillions that they're, right now, they're printing a trillion a day. And they're buying back the market. As you guys can see, it's totally green. When every single... Um, every single market indicator is telling you negative and there's way more market indicators out there you know not counting this the I think I already talked about oil but there's a bunch of other red market indicators you know whether it's the yield curve or whether it's the bond market or and I can go on and on and on and on okay and um, all of these things are again you know right now we got to remember we got to get out of that bubble and so you know a lot of you guys out there have already come out of that bubble and a lot of you guys have already, you know, followed my channel, you know, in order to watch, uh, you know, Mexico content, which again is on the other channel. And uh, you guys have already woken up to that point, you know, where you want to leave the country. And I know right now, a lot of you guys that are stuck in the U.S. have, uh, you know, you're, there's been a monkey wrench thrown into your plans. But it doesn't mean that you guys aren't ready to, to skate, all right? And you're, you guys can't wait to get out of here because, again, I talk to a lot of you guys. And a lot of you guys are my clients and, uh, you know. Yeah, it sucks for a lot of us, all right? But for a lot of you guys that finally did make it out here, um, and you know, ones that have been out here for a while, you know, now seeing the things that are going on over there. And again, you could be watching this from any country, you know? What I mean is, you know, anyone that's an expat watching this right now, um, and you are in whatever country you're in, for the most part, you understand that you're in a way better situation wherever you're at than in the US right now. As you're seeing in the US, things are now not only deteriorating at a massive, exponential rate um, but a lot of these a lot of these theories that a lot of these uh, youtubers or Alex Joneses of the worlds out there have been saying for a very very long time are now finally coming up coming to fruition all right and um, you know I don't want to say I told you so but if you guys have been watching me for years and you never made a decision I told you so all right for a lot of you guys are new viewers welcome all right and um, yeah you know what I mean it's just gonna be very interesting but you know again I have this discussion with a lot of my friends still to this day to this point you know meaning that you know there's a lot of you guys out there that still think that uh, or just are under the impression that I hate America I hate the US or you know anything like that but it's anything but that all right I, I mean I, I could not be any more patriotic you know what I mean? If I could. I mean, basically, I'm as patriotic, patriotic as they come right now, to, you know, um, with this situation. Because basically, um, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm making videos about this subject. And I'm trying to educate you guys and trying to warn you guys and trying to talk about this. And trying to see how we can, you know, come through a solution to this. And look, and by the way, there is a solution. Because a lot of you guys are asking me, it's like, oh, how come you don't have a solution? I'm like, yeah, I do have a solution. There is a solution. There's only one solution. And that solution is revolution. The solution is revolution, all right? It rhymes, all right? It's easy. But a lot of people don't want that, all right? A lot of people are just, um, you know, too comfortable to to do that. A lot of you guys are too comfortable to do and to do many things, right? That's why I make the Monday Motivations, let alone start a revolution. But that's what needs to happen. And, um, you know, in a country like Mexico and other countries around the world, there's already been revolutions, and very recent in many cases. So, you know, it's very different. You know, um, out here, um, even if things get worse, then it's all right. You know, people will rise up and uh, not, you know, not demand the change, create the change. And that's what needs to happen in the U.S. Uh, we need to, you know, um, create that change. Uh, and we need to force that change one way or the other. And um, it's not going to come unless more hardships happen in the U.S. And that's just a reality of it. And assuming that, you know, there is a revolution, assuming that, that you know, we want to take back our country. A lot of people don't even know that this country has already been taken over by other individuals for a very long time. 
So it's an uphill battle and um, it's only going to get harder. It's just the truth. And um, in order for a great change and uh, for all this to be fixed, it needs to be, you know, basically redone. And we know that. Uh, anyone that's, uh, that knows what's going on for reals, they know that that's what needs to happen. And I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but again, it's, it's not about that. It's again, it's like you have two choices here. You know what I mean? Are you going to just keep pulling that Band-Aid very slowly or are you just going to rip it off? And a lot of people are just still very slowly, you know, ripping that Band-Aid off. Or in many cases, they're just leaving, they just want to leave the Band-Aid on and, have, and hopefully it'll fall off with, with time, with years, with whatever. I'm, I'm in the boat of like rip it off and that's it. You know what I mean? Be done with it. But again, to each their own. Speaking of which, I have an announcement to make, which I'm sure you guys have already heard, but I have a podcast now. So this content is in podcast form. A lot of these videos that I'm making are in podcast form. So that's why now, you know, I'm making them, you know, pretty much any length. Okay. Because there's a lot of you guys that prefer to listen to me. In fact, a lot of you guys are probably just listening to me now. And if you guys are finding it very difficult and a pain in the ass to have the YouTube app on while at the same time listening to me, or you would rather listen to me on your phone while you're doing other things and so on and so forth. And again, that's why I did the podcast form. So this video along pretty much any video that is over 20 minutes long, talking about pretty much any subject and every live stream. I'm also doing a podcast. I'm also doing so many other shows. All of that is now on my podcast channel. Where's my podcast channel? Jose Adiaga, basically anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Okay, so whether it's Spotify, Apple Tunes, whatever music, blah, 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 podcasting, just f type my name in there and I'll sh I should pop up and I have so much content on there. So please check it out, and especially now that you probably have a lot of time in your hands and uh, you know, you're probably doing a bunch of stuff and you have time to listen. So um, check all that out. I'm going to be constantly uploading and uh, adding to that. Also, check out my BitChute channel. Um, make sure to follow me on library. Make sure to follow me. All the links are below. Go to my website. Sign up. Make sure that you know where I am because this channel where you're watching me on is in danger of not being around for who knows, you know what I mean? Because I get strikes all the time or whether they're copyright strikes because of uh, unfair copyright strikes or whether they're, you know, um, community strikes because of the content that I talk about, um, they're both very valid and very, uh, you know, um, they happen. So in order for that to prevent uh, you losing me and the content and all this stuff, please subscribe and check out all the other stuff below. Um, and at the very least, just, you know, kind of like save it in one of your folders or what have you. So that way, you know, in case one day you don't see me around. Um, and again, I have another YouTube channel. So worst case scenario, things happen. I, I can, you know, broadcast from there and so on and so forth. And this is the world that we're living in now. You know, basically, um, the censorship is only going to get worse. I mean, it's already pretty bad now. It's especially now with the with the quarantine and so many people, uh, you know, not checking these videos anymore. Now it's all up to the robots, you know, not just there, but, you know, again, on so many other levels, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, basically, I, I have to self-censor a lot of the content that I make and talk about. I mean, I have to talk about the, the beer virus in a certain term um, in order to um, not trigger an algorithm uh, thing. I mean, I've already had several of my videos, you know, straight up shadow banned and blocked before uh, anyone even got to see them. And I wouldn't, I mean, it, it's just insane and incredible and I can make a whole video about that. And in fact, I might. But right now, this one has to come to an end because that's it. It's time, it's time for us to move on, guys, all right? Because uh, I got other things to do. I got to edit this and I got to upload it and all that good stuff. So, guys, if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share. Please check out my you know, all the links below. And uh, more importantly than anything else, don't forget to stay awesome. And um, I'll see you guys here again in a, in a day or two. And I'm just going to be uploading and, and hit the bell icon, okay? Because if you hit that bell icon, you know exactly when I drop a video, all right? And um, they're pretty much random all the time because that's it. You know, there's so much stuff going on. And yeah, you know, I'm just trying to keep up so that we can all be on the same page and we can all, you know, um, learn together and uh, piece all this thing together, all right? I, I, again, you guys out there are just as integral as I am. We're all in this together. So thanks again for watching and uh, love you guys and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.